Next up is another dear friend of mine, uh, and we're going to introduce his work and his connection to, to social media and all the good, all the good that he does in Armenia through social media and through the work and dedication that he demonstrates and displays and embodies every single day is Tim Strait, Sir Tim Strait, the Honorary Consul of uh, Norway and Finland in Armenia. But I'm going to allow him to speak about his work. And first, we're going to watch a quick video. And then Tim's going to join us for the conversation. Thank you. Tallinn is located in Aragats Ozmas, uh, just northwest of Yerevan. And I would say probably the main problem that I have seen is job loss or just lack of jobs themselves. Մենք <laughs> I've been working with Gaine in the TWRCF since it began and can definitely say it is helping to create much needed jobs here in Tallinn. I've been working with Gaine in the TWRCF since it began and can I couldn't imagine just six months ago that the women of the TWRCF would be creating such great collector's items. I'd like you to say hello to a couple of the dolls that you just saw being made up in Tallinn by the Tallinn Women's Resource Center. She is from Artsakh and she is from Sebastia. Very popular dolls. They're the stars of the show today, but we also have a teddy bear from Baird. Now, these are toys. They're a lot of fun, they're very popular, but there's a very serious story behind these. Um, in 2010, during the first six months of the year, 47,000 people left Armenia and did not return. That's only through the airport, not the border or the Gumri airport. 89,000 people left during the first six months of last year. A huge increase. And this year, the first eight months of the, of the, of the year, 91,000 people have left this country. We have a problem. We don't have jobs for the people of this country. We need jobs, particularly in the regions of Armenia, and particularly for women. And I consider myself a social entrepreneur, or a job incubator, or whatever you want to call it. But two years ago, I started an organization called Homeland Handicrafts. Uh, what we do is we go out to a village, and we announce it a couple days ahead of time, and we say, what, what do you make? Come to a meeting, what do you make? And they bring things, either crocheted, or knitted, or sewn, or beaded, or something like that. And I basically critique them. Most of the things that they put in front of me are things that are not catering to the modern market. And so what we do is take the technique. They're great crocheters, they're great knitters, they're great sewers. We take the technique and we apply it to a new product that can be sold in the market. Now, that's the easy part. Going out, finding somebody who wants to crochet something and giving them a design and they make a nice product. How are we going to sell it? Marketing is the hard part of the equation. In order to make sustainable economic units, and that's what this country needs, 
sustainable economic units, small businesses, there needs to be stable, well-developed marketing channels. Marketing channels are the key to a, a successful business in this country today, it's particularly in the regions with few employees from 5 to 20 or something like that. Uh, we need to showcase what great products Armenia can make. Armenians can make wonderful products, it's just nobody knows about it. So how do we get out there? How do we get out to the market? Homeland Handicrafts has actively been using social media to develop these small, these small units, economic units. Of course we have Facebook. Facebook is a given. Pinterest is another one that not all of you might know about. It's a very good way of showing your product and giving information about your product. But then we took another step and we, we jumped on to two things. One called Kickstarter www.kickstarter.com, the other one called Indiegogo, www.indiegogo.com. Two great ways of promoting a product made in Armenia or any other country in a positive way. Now, in Baird, for example, Baird Bears, made in Baird Shamshadin Tavush, Armenia. Uh, we launched a Kickstarter earlier this year. The BairdBaird.com, BairdBairs.com was created. We created a page on Facebook. We spread information. We pounded away at the information, getting the information out there. They're making great teddy bears in a village that's nine kilometers from the front line. You can hear the bombing when you're sleeping in your hotel room at night along the border and so forth. It's a great story. We've had success with that. Over $17,000 worth of these teddy bears was sold on the Kickstarter campaign. And as a result of that, they've been shipping from the Baird Post Office. They don't bring them to Yerevan or anything like that. They ship them from the Baird Post Office. They've had orders piling up ever since. They're, it's a thriving business. They're doing great. It's a huge success story. We got to get these bears out to, the, out to the real world, beyond the limited Armenian world and into the real market. It's not going to be a problem. They're going to patent the name Baird Bears in Armenia. That's how serious a business it's, it's becoming. Um, a similar campaign is this one, the Tallinn Dolls, which is an ongoing campaign today. If you go on to Indiegogo and you just type in Tallinn, the, the, the campaign will pop up. And so far we're about a third of our way through the campaign and about a third of our way through the budget. We're working hard to get these dolls produced. That one is, is, is employing about five women so far, five or six women. We've got media, the Armenian media, talking about these dolls today in the US, in Australia, in Uruguay, in Argentina, in Chile, in Canada, and in Australia. We've got the media going. We've got the Armenia world really tuned into these dolls. People are buying them 10 at a time. Um, you saw the clip. It sounds easy. Oh, you make a clip, you put it up there, and the money pours in. No. There's a lot of hard work behind the, making this campaign. You have to have a great product, and you have to know it's great, you have to test it, you have to have a good story behind the doll. These dolls, the extra money that we earn from this is going to assist integration of disabled children in the Tallinn region and employ the women. It's not just about employing five women, it's about mainstreaming disabled children as well. You have a good product, you have a good story, and then you need a huge network on Facebook. And you've got to get all your friends on Facebook who like the project you're doing to share it with their friends. And then those friends have to share it with their friends. You have to get the dominoes falling on Facebook. Then you need, as I mentioned, an extensive network in the media. We're out there in the media, all the Armenian, Armenian media around the world. You need a clear, attractive website. We have www.bearedbears.com. We have www.talleendolls.com. So there's a lot of work behind this. And and then you just launch your campaign. Once you've got all that work done, then you can't sit still either. You've got you to gotta do it. You've got to market. it. You've got to chat about it. You've got to spread it. You've got to talk about it. You've got to get your message out. But it's perfectly possible to create a serious little business in Armenia that is export-based on sending boxes out from your local post office. It's not a big, mysterious, impossible task. It's perfectly possible. So. That's how you can use some very proactive social media in order to create jobs in your community. I want to mention one thing, just to put things in perspective. I'm talking about social media and getting the message out through social media. 13 years ago, I arrived in this country in September. 
my telephone number on my mobile telephone is the 1623rd number ever issued in the Republic of Armenia. That's how far Armenia has come in the last 13 years. From 1600 telephone numbers at all to what we're doing today. Congratulations, great job. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you one question. Uh, one, of the things, uh, one of the things you said that confirms and, and, and sort of reinforces what Aaron was saying to us is there's got to be a good idea first yeah. and then social media steps in. Yeah. And then social media enhances that hmm. idea. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the Tallinn Dolls and where you are. You just recently introduced the Kickstarter, I believe, program. Or Indiegogo. The Indiegogo yeah. uh, program with the Tallinn Dolls. Yeah. Um, the, the, this is a really multifaceted project. Employing some women in Tallinn, mainstreaming disabled children, but also keeping a tradition alive. If, if I hadn't told you where these dolls come from, would you have known? Because the costume tradition is dying out in this country, as is the carpet tradition. I'm trying to breathe a little bit of life into that as well. So I'm combining it. At one point, I was a bit concerned that there were too many things going on in this project job creation, disabled kids, and dying traditions. You know, it gets a bit complicated, so you do have to keep your message simple and clear. So go on Indiegogo.com mm -hmm. uh, and check out the Tallinn Dolls Project. Mm -hmm. That's where you can find out more about it. And all of us watching here and all of us on the other side of that camera help out. Yeah. This, is, this is not just a doll. It's a whole family. It's a whole town. It's a whole city. It's a whole country. Um, I want to come back to the Barrett Bears. We have Ala Mantashian from Koti here, from one of our communities where we work. Ala is a major, great leader in that community, very close to where Bert is. Koti, and just up the road. Just yeah. up the road. Mm. And she can tell you, and she will tell us later this evening, what an amazing effect this, this Bert Bear project is having in her region, in her community. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. All right, moving right along. Um, here's what I'm going to do. You know, social media is all about, you know, ruffling feathers and doing things a little differently. I'm going to throw the dolls over there. I'm going to throw one over here. <laughs> and one over here. <laughs>